What's up guys, it's Rhett. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the Trezor Model 1. I actually completely destroyed the box trying to open it in a failed take of this video, so I'm not going to get to do an unboxing, unfortunately, for you guys. But what you will hopefully see on the screen right now is all of the stuff that came out of the box. So namely the Trezor Model 1, the USB-A to micro USB adapter, micro USB, some backup cards for your seed phrases here, and then a bunch of stickers. Trezor is one of the oldest cryptocurrency hardware device manufacturers. And this Trezor One device is one of the cheapest, most effective ways to store your cryptocurrency in an offline cold storage wallet that's available on the market. So today I'm going to be going through how to set this up and then I'm going to load it with some Bitcoin and I'm going to spend some Bitcoin from this wallet. And just know that the steps for any of your favorite cryptocurrency will be exactly the same, except obviously you'll have to transfer your favorite cryptocurrency and not Bitcoin. One thing to note about the box that I completely destroyed before we get started here is that you're going to want to look for these little pieces of tape that are hologrammed with the word Trezor on them. These pieces of tape are going to give you the knowledge that your device came from Trezor. And just like any other cryptocurrency hardware wallet, you're not going to want to buy these secondhand. You should always be trying to get these directly from the manufacturer. And if the box comes to you already opened or destroyed, like my box looks like right now, you definitely shouldn't use the Trezor. Go get a new one directly from the manufacturer and make sure that it comes all sealed up and looking nice. So let's just go ahead and get rid of this box for now and go ahead and start using our Trezor hardware device. So the first thing we're going to do here is come to Trezor IO here on our desktops, and I'll have the link to this down in the description. We're going to come up to the top and we're going to click on app, and then you can either use Trezor Suite for web or you can download the desktop app. For now, I'm just going to use Trezor Suite for web because that should be the same for everyone that's watching this video. Let's go ahead and click on that. Trezor Suite is asking us to open Bitcoin links. We're going to allow that for now. And then it's telling us here to connect our Trezor device. So let's go ahead and plug in our Trezor device into our computer. Computers. Got a mess of cables here, but we will figure out where to connect it. So I went ahead and I got a longer cable and now I've plugged in my Trezor device right into my USB extension hub off of my Mac. It wants to do anonymous data collection. I'm going to say F you and we'll move forward. So now it's doing a security check. So my hologram was intact and untampered with. That was the thing that I showed you that I completely destroyed on the box earlier. So that is good to go. I bought from the official shop or a trusted reseller. All good. And then the package wasn't tampered with. My package was not tampered with. Everything was totally good receiving delivery of this Trezor. So let's go ahead and click on set up Trezor here. It's going to take us through firmware installation. So let's go ahead and install the latest firmware onto this Trezor device. It's telling us to disconnect our Trezor and then do not hold any buttons while reconnecting the cable. So let's go ahead and do that. And now it's telling us to confirm on Trezor. It says install new firmware. Never do this without your recovery card. Let's go ahead and do that. Click on continue on the device. All right. So now on the device, it says update finish successfully, please reconnect the device. So I'm going to unplug the device and I'm going to plug the device back in. So now it's telling us to go to Trezor IO slash start, which is I think probably where we already are. So let's go ahead and just hit continue on our Macs and let's go ahead and click on create new wallet. You could recover some other wallet to this Trezor device if you had some Trezor in the past or a ledger device or any BIP39 compatible wallet, you could recover to this Trezor device. You could even recover like a wallet that you had built on your phone onto this Trezor device but I really suggest that you don't do that because the whole point of this device is that the private keys are being generated on the secure element of this Trezor and not being generated on something like your iPhone that has been connected to the internet and that could be compromised. So let's go ahead and create a new wallet on this Trezor and we'll click on standard seed backup. So on the Trezor, it says, do you really want to create a new wallet? I'm going to go ahead and click on confirm and it says my wallet is almost ready. All I have to do is create a backup. So let's go ahead and on the website here, click on create backup. Backup. It says my Trezor is going to generate a list of words that I'm going to write down. This information is the most important part of securing the Trezor. It is the only offline backup of your Trezor and all wallets associated with it. So basically what we're doing is we're going to write our seed phrase, which is basically the private key to all of the different wallets that could possibly be hosted on our Trezor. So our Bitcoin wallet, our Ethereum wallet, our Polygon wallet, our Dogecoin wallet, all of the different cryptocurrencies that are going to be held on our Trezor device are going to be secured by this one seed phrase. And so if if we threw this Trezor in the ocean or we lost it in a boating accident or there was a fire and the Trezor melted or I accidentally step on it and it cracks, any number of things, this device gets totally destroyed. This flimsy piece of paper will now have our seed phrase on it. We can go buy another Trezor or a Ledger or any other BIP39 enabled device and we can restore our 
our cryptocurrency wallets using this flimsy piece of paper. Here on the screen, it's saying, obviously do not share this flimsy piece of paper with anyone or they will be able to have access to all of your funds. They won't need your treasure because they'll just take your flimsy piece of paper, initialize your wallet on another treasure, and then from their treasure, steal all your money. And then obviously never take a picture or make a digital backup of this flimsy piece of paper because that's going to corrupt the security of this physical hardware device and sort of like, why did you get the physical hardware device if you're just going to turn this into an internet enabled wallet anyway? So now that we've understood all of that, we're gonna click check on all of these and we're gonna click on begin backup. So now it's saying confirm on Trezor. So it's telling us to write down the seed. Our first word here is insect. And obviously I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. You should never share your seed phrase with anyone. So I'm gonna write these words down one at a time and I'm just gonna click next to see the next word. And it does really matter on this flimsy piece of paper, which order you put the words in. So obviously one insect, two, the second word is gonna be enter. Make sure you're not putting enter next to seven, make sure you're putting it next to two. And obviously your word is probably not gonna be enter, it's probably gonna be something else. So three, deposit for me. So I'm gonna go find three and I'm gonna write deposit. I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead and just do this for all 24 words and then I'll meet you guys back here. All right, so I've written down all my words and I have my treasure here and it's going to make me filter through all 24 words again until I can get to the next screen. So it's going to go through all 24 words once, you're going to write them down, it's going to filter through all of them again so that you can make sure that you wrote down the right word in the right position and then now we're on to creating a pin to back up our wallets. So let's go ahead and click on set a pin. Here it's asking us if we really want to set a pin, we're going to say yes. And then we'll see on the device, it's creating a grid of nine numbers. And then on the desktop, it's giving us a grid of nine dots, right? So let's say I wanted my pin in this case to be one, two, three, four. I would click on one, two, three, four, and then enter pin. And then I can repeat the pin and we can make a pin of up to 50 digits. I'm just gonna do one, two, three, four for the purpose of this demo. So let's go ahead and click on one, two, three, four. You'll notice here that they are now in different spots. And every time you go to enter your pin, the numbers will be in a different position. And that's so if someone had bugged my computer, you know, they can't see which numbers I'm entering. The numbers are only ever generated on the device. So let's go ahead and enter one, two, three, four again. So one, two, three, four, enter pin. So now it's verifying for us and it says that our pin is set. So let's go ahead and click on continue. So now we can activate some different wallets. I really only care about Bitcoin, but if you cared about something like Ethereum or something like Vertcoin, I don't like what the f are these things? Um, you could click on those and you could click on complete setup. So I'm going to edit the name of this device and I'm going to call it Trezor Demo Device. And that's too many words. So I'll just call it Trezor Demo and we'll click on access suite now. You could call your device whatever you want to call it. So now you're going to get to select the type of wallet. A standard wallet is a no passphrase wallet, and then a hidden wallet is a passphrase required wallet. I think for most people, standard wallet is going to be the right thing to do. There is danger in creating a hidden wallet. If you ever do lose this passphrase, you're going to lose access to all of these funds that's on this flimsy piece of paper, because you're going to have to remember, first of all, all these 24 words. And then if you have this, you also have to remember whatever that passphrase was. And if you just store the passphrase on the piece of paper, you know, there's really no reason to do that because it's just two pieces of information in the same place. If someone took your flimsy piece of paper, they would also get your passphrase. So it really only makes sense to do this if you're going to store the passphrase in a secure place that is separate from wherever you're storing your flimsy piece of paper. So let's go ahead and just create a standard wallet for now. All right, guys, so now it's telling us our wallet is ready to use. So let's go ahead and click on Bitcoin and let's go ahead and try to receive some Bitcoin. We'll click on show full address here. So here's our Bitcoin receiving address. Once you see this QR code, here on Trezor, you're going to go ahead and click on confirm here on the device. And you're going to make sure that the address that you're showing here on Trezor matches the address that you see there on the screen. So let's go ahead and just click on confirm. Now let's go ahead and open up maybe your favorite exchange. I'm going to go ahead and go to Kraken. Kraken is the lowest fee exchange on the market right now. I did a video about it a couple weeks ago that I'll link up in the cards. Unfortunately, while Kraken is the lowest fee cryptocurrency exchange on the market right now, they do not have free deposits in Texas, which sucks because I live in Texas. 
Texas. So definitely check out that video if you're interested in where I'm currently buying cryptocurrency. But basically to fund this Trezor wallet now, all we're going to do is go to the cryptocurrency exchange that you've been buying from, find the cryptocurrency that you want to withdraw, in this case, Bitcoin. I'm going to click on Bitcoin. I'm going to click on withdraw. It's saying, be careful. Once the funds are sent, you're not going to be able to get them back. So we're going to go ahead and click on OK. We're going to make a standard Bitcoin network withdraw, and we're going to click on add a Bitcoin address. I'll make the description of this Trezor YouTube demo device, and then I'll come back here to the Trezor. I will copy this Bitcoin receiving address, and I will paste it here in the withdraw address section, and I'll click on add withdraw address. I've confirmed my withdraw address in Kraken, and so now when we go back to Kraken, I should be able to put in a withdraw amount, and let's go ahead and withdraw 100% of the Bitcoin that I currently have sitting in Kraken, which is, it looks like 0.00057 Bitcoin, and I'm going to get charged, you know, a little bit in fees, so it's actually 0.56. So let's go ahead and click on withdraw here, and we will confirm. So it says withdraw successfully submitted. Kraken shows that I have no Bitcoin left in my account. So now if we go back to Trezor, we should see that if we click away here. All right, guys, full disclosure, you might see that the Bitcoin amount that is up here in my Trezor wallet right now is different than what you saw in the last clip. I was having some technical difficulties with recording, so I actually sent the Bitcoin the first time that you saw into the Trezor wallet, and then I transferred it back to Kraken. But that whole transferring it back to Kraken process, the video was really, really bad. So I'm re-recording this section. So you'll see now that I have Bitcoin actively in my Trezor wallet. And so next, let's go ahead and transfer that Bitcoin out of my Trezor wallet back to an exchange like Kraken. You could do this exact same thing with Coinbase or whatever your exchange of choice is. And you would do this if for some reason you were trying to sell your Bitcoin out of your cold storage, you know, back onto an exchange so that you could get US dollars or whatever your local currency is. So let's go ahead and click on send here. By default, this send max is going to be not selected, but you can go ahead and select it to send all of the amount of Bitcoin out of your wallet onto the exchange. Or you could type in a very precise amount if you were looking to, you know, sell $5, for example, or 0.01 Bitcoin, for example. Next, we'll go ahead back to Kraken and we'll click on deposit on our Bitcoin address and we'll click on copy deposit address. And then we'll come back over to Trezor and paste that deposit address in our Trezor address section right here. Next, we'll see a couple interesting features that Trezor is giving us. I think the most notable ones here are add lock time. So if you wanted to designate your transaction for maybe a week from now, you could go ahead and do that with add lock time. You could replace by fee to get your transaction approved faster if your transaction was stuck in the mempool. And then for more advanced users, coin control here, a very important feature for people that are trying to control specific UTXOs of Bitcoin sent to an exchange in this case. If you don't know what that means, go ahead down below and leave a comment and I'll work on a video to hopefully better explain what a UTXO is and why they're so important for Bitcoin. For now though, let's just send a regular transaction and we'll click on high fee here because I want the transaction to clear as soon as possible because of course we're doing this demo here. So let's go ahead and click on review and send. Next, it's going to ask me for my pin here on Trezor. So again, I'm going to do one, two, three, Four. And next, I'm going to confirm that all the information that I'm seeing on the screen here is the same as what is showing on my physical Trezor device. That all looks good, so I'm going to click on confirm, and then I'm going to confirm again. So now the Trezor has signed the transaction. Now we're ready to broadcast it here on our web app, so we'll go ahead and click on send. So now we have sent our Bitcoin out of our Trezor hardware device here and back onto our Kraken cryptocurrency exchange, and we should see this transaction coming in here in the next 10 minutes. And finally, if we come back to Kraken, we can see that our Bitcoin arrived safely. It is currently in the confirming status, and if we come over to the mempool, we can see that it currently has one confirmation. Kraken will show us this amount of Bitcoin on our Bitcoin deposit balance, and it will be totally confirmed once we have four confirmations here, which typically takes less than an hour. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. We kind of unboxed the Trezor. We got it all set up using Trezor Suite on the web app. We sent Bitcoin into our Trezors here from our cryptocurrency exchange of choice. In this case, it was Kraken, but you could do the same exact thing with any other cryptocurrency and any other cryptocurrency exchange like Coinbase or Binance. And then you'll follow the exact same process to send your cryptocurrency out of your Trezor and back to the exchange if you were trying to sell it or something like that. The last thing that I wanna emphasize 
in this video is how important it is that you keep this flimsy piece of paper safe that you have written down your seed phrase on that Trezor has given to you. And obviously don't do what I'm doing and just share your seed phrase on the internet. I'm going to be deleting this wallet after I record this video and reinitializing a new wallet onto my Trezor. And I will be doing videos in the future showing you how to reinitialize your Trezor from this seed phrase and even transfer this Trezor wallet onto a device like this Ledger Nano S Plus. If you ever did want to, for some reason, maybe Trezor went out of business and you couldn't get another Trezor. As long as Ledger was still in business, you could actually take this seed phrase from your Trezor and reinitialize it onto a Ledger. So really that's the beauty of these hardware devices. They all use the same BIP39 Bitcoin standard. So if you are interested in a tutorial like that, definitely go down below in the comments and let me know. I do still respond to all the comments on this channel. And then finally, I personally would never keep my seed phrase on this flimsy piece of paper because someone could just come by and rip it up like this and now all my money's gone. So what I suggest you do instead of storing your net worth on a flimsy piece of paper in your sock drawer is instead getting a hammer and bulletproof sheets of titanium. I like using this product. It's called the Crypto Tag. I'll have a link to it down in the description. The hammer is a little excessive and expensive, but there's a cheaper version that you can use with these Crypto Tag plates that I'll leave linked down in the description. If you do have any questions about anything we covered in this video, definitely let me know down below. And if you're interested in more Trezor hardware wallet demos or comparisons between the Trezor and the cold card and the ledger, definitely subscribe to the channel. I come out with new videos every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I love you all. Goodbye. Let's just get rid of this box for now and go ahead and start using our treadwork.